What is up, bros? Hey, dudes. It's Brian. Welcome back to another episode of Porch Time. Uh, today, we are not on the porch. We're in my car because it's starting to get uh, rainy outside. And so I thought, I'm just going to sit in the forerunner. Um, so anyways, something that I've been hearing over the last few weeks as I meet with guys, um, but really over the last several years as I've sat down with many of you, a lot of our guys in recent weeks um, are struggling with an assurance of salvation. And it's really wild because as they begin to take stock of their past and the things they've done, they're left to conclude there's no way I can be a Christian if I've done those things. And I get it. Um, shame is a powerful, powerful enemy. And when shame gets a hold of us, it's it's hard for it to let go sometimes. Um, and so I, I, I've been trying to help get guys to see that almost in, in, in a way of arrogance. And it's, it's such a delicate tightrope to walk. But we ask the question, so what are we saying about the nature um, of the atonement, of Christ's sacrifice? And what are we saying about God's character if we were to say, well, I believe God's death on the cross is sufficient for everybody else but me? It's kind of arrogant. And... Um, so we're trying to help guys. One of my goals for guys while they're here is to get their eyes off of themselves and onto Jesus. One of the things American evangelical culture has taught us is to become this, this ver these narcissistic navel gazers. That's the only way I know how to describe it. We become so obsessed with our performance or our failures. And if you spend all of your time and effort staring at your failures... I would suggest, I would I would be willing to bet you're struggling with your salvation. Um, now, is there a place for obedience? Absolutely. Um, but one of the things I'm, I try to get guys to see is that, man, guys who don't care about their standing, their, their relationship with the Lord, aren't going to care about their sin. They're just not. And so the fact that you're wrestling with sin is a good sign to me. Um, and so there's several questions that we we wrestle, we work through while, while guys are here. And maybe you remember some of these. And one of the questions I like to ask is, can the one who found you lose you? And the answer is no, right? Um, I came across a quote yesterday from Martin Luther and he said, if I look at myself, I conclude there's no way I could be saved. But then here's what he said. But when I look at Jesus, I wonder how could I ever be lost? Um, and he's kind of echoing Paul's sentiment um, and I think it's in First Corinthians three, Second Corinthians. I think it's Second Corinthians three eighteen, where he says, um, and I'm I'm summarizing. As you and I get our eyes fixed on Jesus, we're being transformed from one degree of glory to the next. Um, and Paul, kind of from what I can gather, seems to indicate as we get our eyes off of us and onto the sufficiency of of Jesus and what He has done for us and the righteousness that He's given us. Um, we're going to be changed and we'll taste a measure of freedom that maybe we haven't before. Um, Paul writes in one place, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Um, so if you find yourself today in a spot where maybe shame has reared its ugly head and you are faced with yet another failure, um, I just want to remind you that the blood of Christ covers you. And the vehicle by which God has provided for us to kind of remedy that is this thing called repentance. And for me growing up, repentance was always the thing that bad people did to become Christians. And the older I get, the more I study scripture and read some of the early writings of the church fathers, repentance is the beautiful gift of God to help us maintain um, a right relationship with the Lord. Um, Luther said he, desi he desires that all of our day, all of our days would be marked by repentance, that that would be an ongoing ethic that we live in. So I hope that you don't lose heart today if you find yourself wrestling with guilt and shame. Um, remember, shame often preaches a false gospel. Our feelings often preach a false gospel. So I want to encourage you today and just remind you that what Jesus did on the cross for you and me was enough. And 
in those moments where we mess up, the solution is not to conclude, well, I knew it. There's no way God could love me or keep me. The, the better solution is to go, I'm going to go back. I'm going to look back to that event and I'm going to repent and walk back towards Jesus and get up and see what I can learn and keep moving forward. So brothers, don't quit today. Don't give up today. Um, the fact that you're a Christian doesn't mean that you stop sinning. The fact that you're a Christian means now you have a savior and an advocate with the father. You have a helper. You have a shepherd. You have somebody who journeys with you as you wrestle. Um, I, I love one of my seminary professors said, we have been saved. We are being saved. And one day we will be ultimately saved. Um, it's a lifelong journey. It's a lifelong process of being conformed into the image of Jesus. And so I don't know who this applies to today. Maybe I'm just preaching to myself. I don't know. But I just want to remind you today, uh, brothers, that we, we forget often what Christ has done for us. And so maybe today you get your eyes off of yourself. Maybe today you get your eyes fixed on Jesus. Uh, find a few brothers who can help you do that. Get in a good church that on Sunday points you to that reality, the finished work of Jesus. Um, love you dudes. Hope you're doing well. They're, they're uh, forecasting uh, Noah's, Noah's flood part three, part four next week. I think they're saying like a crap ton of rain is coming our way. So who knows? We may flow out of, float out of here. Hope the weather's better where you are. Um, don't forget, brothers, God is with you. And until next time.